How did the Pope get so rich? By using faith as a money printer. But how did he manage to do that? In this video, we try to turn the Asatru faith into the biggest money printing machine of Crusader Kings 3. By combining the powers of faith reformation and war, forceful conversion and some less conventional roguery, we attempt to become richer than the Pope himself. And maybe even give him a taste of his own medicine. Will our boy Money become the richest head of faith of all? Or will he be crusaded into oblivion? Let's find out. Jarl Money of the Duchy of Upland is a divine ruler with a dream. To be able to reform the Asatru faith, we needed to control three out of five holy sites. We already controlled Upland, so we only needed Pranderheim and North Riding in England. To be able to do this, Money would need to gain a lot of land. He started specking into the Overseer Tree, helping him to stabilize recently conquered areas. But land cannot be ruled alone. Money's council was looking pretty good. He set up his steward to increase development, increasing the income in the long run. And he told his chancellor to focus on domestic affairs, keeping the vassals happy. To aid him in his newfound life goal, he also looked for a wife and he found Myla, who was intellectual. This is a congenital trait, possibly passed down to our children. Which would come in really handy seeing the plans we have for them. Money instantly started to sway his new wife. Because let me teach you something, boys. If you make a lady happy, she's more likely to you. Noted, thank you. To reform your faith, you need a huge amount of piety. So right after the marriage, Money went on a pilgrimage. It wasn't the most expensive one, but enough to get that piety flowing. Pilgrimages are expensive though, and so are the hunts and feasts needed to gain prestige, which we in turn need to wage wars. So Money needed to focus on gaining... money. Yeah. Why do I keep giving them those stupid names? So he spent his money on building a trade port in Upland, increasing his income a bit. Nobody is going to convert to a religion that's led by an insignificant Jarl, right? Time to start expanding and become the King of Sweden. We start with the war on the Chiefdom of Farmland, which was easily taken. Conquering a county by force makes the locals angry somehow. Oh, I wonder why. So we put our marshal up there to increase county control, which we're gonna do every time we conquer a new piece of land. Not long after the war, Money's son and heir was born, which was a huge moment for Money. Welcome to the world, gold money grab. You have no idea of the twisted plot you've been born into. It's time to take Pranderheim, which really was a joke. And with Pranderheim in the pocket, we just needed one more holy site to reform the Asatru faith. However, this had to wait because Jorvik, where the North Riding holy site is, was still far too strong. Money needed more cash to be able to create one more duchy and then the Kingdom of Sweden. He gave away his underdeveloped counties and kept the good ones for himself, for Max Stonks. And with a bit of patience, he was able to gain enough money to create Bergslagen and the Kingdom of Sweden. Money was now king of Sweden and because he was such a cool guy, a lot of neighboring rulers just accepted vassalage to him. Medelpad, Gotland, Angermanland and even the whole duchy of Smalland. This is great because when rulers join through vassalage, it doesn't lower county control as much and keeps the realm a lot more stable. After a few years, Jorvik was finally weakened enough and Money started a war to get the holy side of North Riding. Easy clap. Now, with three holy sites in the pocket, we would soon be able to reform the Asatru faith. But first, some more expansion. For years, Money did nothing but conquer land, held feasts for prestige and did pilgrimages for piety. A lot of piety was needed to reform the faith because we need to change a lot of doctrines for it to work as a money printer. First you need communion. The main tenant needed to let followers of the faith seek indulgences and thus give money. However, to actually get that money yourself, you also need to take the head of faith temporal option. And to be able to get that, you need the lay clergy doctrine. And if that wasn't enough, we also want to change our religious attitude to righteous, so we can imprison vassals who don't want to convert to our new religion. All of that coming to a total of about 7.5k piety. That's to be able to afford this reformation, Money changed his lifestyle focus to learning and wanted to go for the profit perk to cut the faith reformation cost in half. But although Money was pretty good at understanding martial tactics, he wasn't much of a scholar. He also wasn't the youngest anymore and time started to tick. So he decided to go on one more pilgrimage before reforming for the full price. I still feel ripped off. Anyway, Money is now the field care of the new Asatru faith. And just before the reformation, he conquered all of Sweden and most of Norway. The best part of this is that all the 23 vassals converted with him to the new faith, making Money their religious leader, who they'd pay their indulgences to if they committed any sinful acts. Thanks for the idea, Pope. But truth be told, Scandinavians are poor. 
They were all tribal and getting indulgences from them wasn't going to pay the bills. The big money was a bit to the south, Europe and beyond. We needed to get the rest of the world to convert to the Asatru faith. Fortunately, money had this all planned out. The key to getting the world to convert to the Asatru faith was gold. No, not the currency, money's son and heir. Gold was educated in intrigue and as soon as his father died during a drinking binge, which sounds like the best way to die, not gonna lie, he took the reins. Gold is able to use the kidnapper perk in the intrigue skill tree to abduct the heirs of significant rulers and force these future kings and queens to convert to the Asatru faith in return for their freedom. Basically we kidnap little boys and we only release them under very special circumstances. Oh, that sounds familiar. Everything was going according to plan. As our brother inherited Norway, we had to take that back, but that was kinda easy. Faith was reformed and Gold was now king of Sweden and the religious leader for the Asatru faith. But then, disaster struck. King Gold slipped when trying to get out of its bath and fell on his head. He is now incapable. Unable to create hooks and most importantly, unable to kidnap people. <sighs> The whole plan was a complete disaster. Gold only managed to convert one kid and now he's unable to do anything. Everything seemed to be doomed. But was it? Gold couldn't live with the fact that he failed his father and that he could only count to four on a good day. So he decided to take his own life. Wow, that's extreme. Now his three-year-old son Money II was completely on his own. Three years old, king of Sweden and religious leader for the Asatru. As a child in CK3 you can do almost nothing, a recipe for disaster. It would only be a matter of time for someone to try and take the throne from this three year old ruler. But quite frankly, this didn't happen. Somehow the realm remained peaceful. Well, apart from Norway splitting off and going to my uncle, but let's be honest, who gives a shit about Norway? And it was getting even better. We found Money a great educator that was very good at intrigue. He also hosted a Meet Peers event every two years, giving him multiple possibilities to increase his relations with other noble kids, and most of all, increase his intrigue skills. And this worked out a lot better than I expected. This intrigue focus gave Money some of the best intrigue traits available, and by the time he turned 16, he was deceitful, paranoid, lustful, vengeful, and he became an elusive shadow, together with being intelligent and strong. This made him a true beast with 37 intrigue at the age of 16. But wait, there's more! After spontaneously growing a sick beard at the age of 19, he decided to go to uni, and he had a great time there. And most importantly, he became a conniving puppet master. The highest possible intrigue education, giving him plus 10 intrigue. And together with the power of his newlywed intrigue focused wife, he reached a total of 49 intrigue by the age of 20. This was truly incredible. The best intrigue character I've ever had. We don't even need to take back Norway. The realm is now stable as is, and the Norwegians are already Asatruans. So it's just best to keep it this way. Time to start abducting some children and rake in that big money. Normally you'd need hooks on potential agents to gain enough plot power to abduct children. However, since money's intrigue is so ridiculously strong, he's able to abduct them right away. Making him able to abduct a lot more children in a lot less time. The way to go about this is to look around every independent duchy or kingdom and check if it has an unlanded child as their primary heir. Then when you manage to abduct them you can negotiate release and demand their conversion to your faith. Now it's just a matter of time, or murder, before they ascend to the throne and become wealthy Asatru rulers, ready to pay off their sins. To me. And for the best part of the 30 upcoming years, this is exactly what money did. Look around all of Europe for heirs, kidnap them, convert them to the Asatru faith, rinse and repeat. Once money got the twice schemed intrigue trait, he could murder or kidnap an average of two and a half people per year. Which means that in the 27 years of him scheming around, dozens upon dozens of children were abducted and converted. And dozens of people who stood in the way were murdered. Slowly but surely, the forcefully converted heirs ascended to their thrones and started to convert their own vassals and counties. Just see it grow over the years, like a plague infecting the Catholic Europe. Isn't it beautiful? It kept spreading and spreading until finally, the Asatru faith was taking the upper hand in Europe. 
Most of its leaders were now a Satruans and the indulgences were flooding in. Just look at that money gain. King Money was growing old and wary, and kidnapping children for the best part of his life took a toll on his mind and body. He had become a drunk lunatic, but ultimately had managed to finish what his grandfather started. They created a faith that would bring in money for the Money Grub dynasty for generations to come. There was only one hurdle in the way of the total conversion of Europe to Asatru. Let's give your Pope a taste of his own medicine. Time for a great holy war. A crusade on Rome. A crusade on the Vatican. Money sent out the ravens and initiated the crusade. His life's work was finally paying off. All of the children he abducted and indoctrinated over the years were on his side in the war. The Asatru cult was now a lot larger than the army of the Catholics. And after about a year of waging wars down in Italy, the Catholics surrendered. The Catholic faith was badly crippled, leaving room for the Asatru faith to grow even larger and get in even more indulgences to fill the treasury of the money grabs. Click the next video if you want to see more. And a very special thanks to my patrons, you guys are great. Well, until next time. Bye.